The opening scene shows a carpenter carefully crafting a box. The finished box has a small hole on one side. A middle-aged man named Jerry Harford sits in a bar, sharing his sorrows with his friend and co-worker Mike. Jerry believes his wife Lisa has cheated on him, but he wants to forgive her. Mike disapproves of this, and suggests that Jerry should cheat on her as an act of revenge and call it even. He reasons that forgiveness would be a sign of weakness in this case, which she would take advantage of. Mike promises him a good time at a brothel, of which he is a regular client himself. Jerry is slowly convinced, and agrees with the idea. Mike drives Jerry to the secret brothel, which is disguised as a psychic's clinic. He forces Jerry to wear a plastic bag on his head, so the location of the brothel remains unknown to him. This should prevent him from visiting regularly, in case he wants more of a service offered there called, the special. They enter, and Jerry instantly sets his eyes on a woman named Sin. To his surprise, she knows his name, and justifies it by saying she could see it in his eyes. An older woman and psychic named Madame Jora, who runs the brothel, arrives to greet them. Even though Jerry was attracted to Sin, Mike demands he gets the special. Funnily enough, Jerry assumes Madame Jora is the special, but realizes his mistake when he is taken to a different room. To his confusion, there is nobody else in the room. He begins to think it is all a joke, when he finds a sealed box with a hole in it which says, stick it in here. He scans for any signs of a prank, and then eventually complies with the instructions on the box. Jerry thinks of what he has come to, and finds it laughable, but soon enough, his entire perspective changes. He experiences something he has never had before, and eventually passes out from exhaustion. When Mike finds Jerry, he panics slightly. He dresses him up, and Madame Jora asks a worker to help Mike carry him to the car. Jora warns Mike not to bring Jerry again, because he is wanted by the special. Jerry wakes up in the car, still dazed by the extraordinary experience. He wonders what was in the box, but Mike insists that it's best not to dig around. When they get to his house, Mike promises to take him to sin next time, because just one mystery box experience is enough for everyone. It's not a rule, but there is some reason behind it. Jerry's wife Lisa is upset about his late night drinking. To his surprise, she reveals that she's pregnant. Jerry considers his poor sperm motility, along with his suspicion that she has cheated. He blurts out that he doubts whether the child is his, which upsets Lisa even more. Later that night, Jerry has a nocturnal emission. The next morning, a grumpy and hungover Jerry arrives at work. He tells Mike about the pregnancy news he received. He mentions that Lisa has accused him of seeing other women following his night emissions. A few days ago she had booked him a snowblower and had to personally contact the salesman, which Jerry had misinterpreted. Jerry realizes he has been assuming wrongly of his wife. He also regrets revenge cheating, although he does not fully consider it cheating. Despite all these realizations, Jerry insists on knowing the location of the brothel. Mike refuses in all ways, so Jerry takes it upon himself to find out. He books an appointment with a psychic during his lunch break. He visits and asks for Madame Jora's address. Eventually, he finds the brothel and offers to pay double for the special. After another exhilarating experience, Jerry begins to investigate the box. He checks the inside, but there's nothing. He then looks for any openings and finds a lock behind it. The box is light enough to be picked up, so he tries to steal it. Madame Jora suddenly enters as he attempts to leave, and she falls down, trying to stop him. Jerry hesitates, but steps on her throat to silence her, and ends up suffocating her. He looks at himself in the mirror, and soon rushes out with the box. Ivan, a worker at the brothel, notices him driving away. Jerry finds an advert for a motel in a public restroom. He checks in for a week, and pays with his card. The owner explains the rules about cleaning up the room before checking out. Jerry hides the box in his room, and rudely orders the housekeeper not to enter his room at any cost. At the brothel, a detective investigates the scene. He refers to Madame Jora by her real name, Anya Grabinski. Ivan insists that he is her only employee and security guard. The detective recognizes the smell of cigarettes, and gets suspicious that the place hosts something more than the clinic, but Ivan is firm with his answers. Jerry returns to work, and pretends everything is normal. Mike goes out drinking alone, and jokes about men tending to be polygamous, which is why he is unable to settle down and get married. Jerry relives his moment with the special box multiple times. He is continuously baffled by its power and curious about what's inside. He finds a mysterious fluid inside it, which stimulates him fiercely. When he gets home, Lisa is again suspicious of his so-called late-night work meeting. He attempts to use the fluid he collected, but Lisa interrupts him, so he ends up sleeping with her. The following morning, Lisa calls Mike and asks if he has noticed a change in Jerry's behavior. She explains he has treated her like a one-night stand, and it makes her doubt his loyalty to her. When Mike relays said concerns to Jerry, he rudely snaps at him for talking to his wife behind his back. Whilst showering, Lisa suddenly experiences immense pain in her lower body, and is horrified to see what seems like a m Meanwhile, the detective begins interrogating Ivan again. He feels like Ivan is deliberately hiding some things that could lead to the culprit, perhaps in an attempt to cover for the culprit. He asks Ivan if items were missing from the place after Madame Jora was supposedly murdered, but Ivan denies any such events. Ivan also mentions that if he could put curses on people like a psychic, he would curse the man who did this to her. The detective asks him why he assumes it to be a man, 
and Ivan replies that men often visit fortune tellers and psychics too. The detective looks at the mirror in the special room and something strikes him. He questions Ivan about any objects on the table. And Ivan mentions the wooden box as if it was a normal box. Jerry gets a rash on his pelvic and groin area. After repeated use of the box, he sees a doctor who prescribes him an ointment and suggests cutting down whatever activity he has been engaged in. Jerry gets the ointment and goes back home to rest. Lisa tells him about her possible mis- He nonchalantly apologizes at first, but then follows with a somewhat sincere apology and words of comfort. He then goes to sleep, the burning pain in his stomach growing past his navel. The following morning, Jerry rushes impatiently to the box he is now addicted to, but the magic seems to have disappeared, or rather, the fluid inside it has. He buys a bolt cutter from a store nearby, and breaks open the lock. The box opens, but its contents emit a foul smell. Blinded by his obsession with whatever satisfaction the contents gave him, Jerry begins to utilize them. His rashes keep growing upwards, but he just applies the ointment and moves on. Lisa learns that Jerry has called in sick at work from his coworker. She also sees the name of the motel on the card payment receipts in the mail. She finds the motel and walks in cautiously, looking for his room. The housekeeper realizes she's looking for the strange resident and hints at Jerry's room. Lisa confronts Jerry before he can open the door. When he finally does, she enters and comments on the stinky odor. She asks him to bring forth whoever he's cheating on her with. Jerry insists he wasn't cheating, but it's futile considering the situation at hand. He stops her from entering the bathroom, which confirms her suspicion. She fights him off and enters, but she is surprised and disgusted at the same time upon seeing the gooey stinky ball. It moves as if it is alive. Jerry tries to pull her away, but she strikes back. In a moment, he puts her in a chokehold and uses all his strength to strangle her. When she passes out, he shows zero signs of remorse and cuddles the creepy ball instead. His caressing shows that he has come to a point where he can only see his wife as an object of pleasure. All of a sudden, she regains consciousness, and Jerry panics, leaving behind every ounce of humanity. He stabs her with the bolt cutter. With no emotion on his face and no remorse in his heart, he cleans up all evidence of his brutal act. He returns home, where the salesman with the snowblower waits for him. Jerry displays crude behavior towards him. Then he carries the special ball to the bathtub and the body of his wife to the attic. He puts up drapes and decorative lights as he fondles and caresses the slimy mass. Mike watches the news about Madame Shora. Ivan has stepped up to warn whoever murdered Jora and took the box. He mentions that he knows what is happening to the suspect and he is the only one who can help him. Mike rushes out upon hearing that. Jerry checks out of the motel and gives the owner the keys. The owner wonders what he required the room for, considering he doesn't meet the criteria of his regular clients. He jokingly asks if Jerry was a fugitive molester or a murderer. Mike enters Jerry's house through the garage door and looks for Lisa. He finds the decorated room, but there is nobody inside. Jerry is seen throwing the box and the bolt cutter in the garbage somewhere, but the greasy glob is still at his home. Mike finds it and becomes concerned. Jerry comes back and meets Mike, somewhat delighted to see him. His rashes have reached his neck now, and Mike expresses his worries. Mike tells him about Ivan's warning and suggests he goes to him for help. Jerry ridicules Mike's assumption that he was behind Madame Jora's murder just because he stole the box. When Mike insists Jerry be taken to the hospital, Jerry suddenly gets riled up. He's angry at Mike for entering his house without permission. Mike tries to convince him that if he really did that to Jora, he can help him sort it out, corresponding to which Jerry brings up Lisa's body. Mike is stunned, and before he can digest this information, Jerry starts blaming him for starting everything. The quarrel ends with Jerry choking Mike with a plastic bag until he stops breathing. Jerry then goes to sleep, cuddling his magic ball. By morning, the rashes have taken over his face, and his teeth are shaking. He notices something is wrong with the ball. The doorbell rings, and it's his friends visiting for his birthday, but he doesn't let them in. When he returns, the ball has shrunk into a tiny black jelly-like substance. Jerry mourns over it. Jerry then goes to meet Ivan with a face fully covered in rashes. His whole demeanor has changed, resembling that of a sobered. Ivan takes the remnants from him and plans to fix it. In exchange for the damage caused, Jerry lets Ivan know that it works for women as well, claiming that he tried it on his wife. Jerry asks Ivan if he can be a part of his team, and he receives a positive response. Ivan carves a similar box out of wood. As he works with the saw and drill, Jerry's condition keeps worsening. His hair and teeth fall out. The box is almost done, and Jerry has almost turned into a burnt, inflamed mass of flesh. His skin begins to melt like candle wax as he morphs into a ghastly creature. Ivan brings up the box, which is now titled Stick It In Here, and Jerry's deformed head is detached and put in the box. The detective visits Ivan with new information about Jerry's DNA found on Madame Jora's money bills. Ivan denies knowing such a person. He sees the detective eyeing his employees, so he offers him something better, the special. 